Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to this important, essential, indispensable Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that the Holy Spirit will breathe on everyone, on you. So, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Be it confirmed in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. Thank you for all the ministers. Thank you for the way they've been ministering to us. And thank you, Lord, for how you are going to use the Bible study for your power, for your might, for your glory, for the greatness of your personality to be part of our lives. We are praying, Lord, you breathe on everyone tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that all weakness, all fearfulness, and all timidity and need will be swept away by the power of the torrential rain of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. We are considering the gifts of the Spirit. Believers' purposeful possession of spiritual gifts. And we're studying from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Reading from verse 1 all through to verse 13. I just read verse 1 and then we go to verse 7 all through to verse 11. Look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now verse 7. In verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of knowledge, to another the word of wisdom, by the same Spirit. Verse 9, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. Verse 10, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now verse 11, it says, but all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, Dividing to every man severally as he will. Those are the verses we're looking at tonight. The Lord calls the believer to possess the gifts of the Spirit. And so the apostle said, brethren, all the brethren, Corinthian brethren, and today's brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. First comes enlightenment and then our faith to approach God and have and possess what he has promised and then after that possession comes the exercise of the gifts tonight we're looking at the message under three perspectives number one conversion of Gentiles by the Spirit Actually, the work of conversion is done by the Father, by the Son, by the Holy Ghost. We emphasize now the part of the Spirit of God in the conversion of Gentiles, in the conversion of everyone. Point number two, comprehension of the gifts of the Spirit. We need to understand before we can ask, before we can seek, before we can knock at the door of God. And before we can manifest faith, we need to know what we are manifesting faith for and what we want to receive from the Lord. Comprehension of the gifts of the Spirit. Number three, concentration on gifts without 
sanctification. You see, there are people, they concentrate on the gifts of the Spirit. There's nothing wrong with that. The only problem with the people is that they push sanctification aside. Let's come to number one. Number one is conversion of Gentiles by the Spirit. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the past, the present, and then the prevailing spirituality. Number one, the past sinfulness of corrupt Gentiles. Number two, the present salvation through converting grace is the grace of God that comes to our lives and then he gives us that experience of salvation the experience of transformation the experience of conversion in the Lord present salvation through converting grace number three prevailing spirituality through the creative God the creative God, the power of the God that cannot fail and the power of the God that today to the present time the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost coming upon our lives, transforming our spirits and then granting us spirituality the power, the grace, the gift the might, the oppression of the Spirit by the creative God. Let's come to number one. Number one, past sinfulness of corrupt Gentiles. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That means I will not have you to be ignorant. I do not desire, I do not want any of the brethren, the believers in the church to be ignorant. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Understand as past tense, ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were past tense as she were led it tells us what their lives were they were gentiles they were sinful just like all men on earth it tells us what their lives were as they were gentiles it tells us in ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 17 ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 17 this i say therefore and testify in the Lord that she henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, as other Gentiles live, as other Gentiles behave, as other Gentiles conduct, comport themselves in the vanity of their mind. Before conversion, the mind is vain and the mind is purposeless and the mind just goes on in the tradition of their forefathers in verse 18 it says having the understanding dark in gentiles unconverted being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them ignorant of christ ignorant of grace ignorant of new life ignorant of the power of the lord to convert to convert and to change it says because of the blindness of their heart and then it says in verse 19 who being past feeling have given themselves over to unto lasciviousness in the unconverted stage in the sinful stage they give themselves over they surrender themselves absolutely into the into sin into the hands of the devil to work all uncleanness with greediness that is the work and the practice and they do everything unclean and they do that with greediness they are passionate and zealous for sin and for evil that the past life of the sinner 
the past life of the gentile the past life of the ungodly and then he says he tells us in verse 19 who being past feeling they have given themselves over unto lasciviousness and they walk all transgression all iniquity all evil all sinfulness all uncleanness he do that with greediness we're coming to romans chapter 3 and in romans chapter 3 we're reading here from verse 9 it tells us in verse 9 it says what then i will better than thee we jews i will better than the gentiles and men i will better than the women the educated and we better than the illiterate it says no in no wise for we have before proved both jews and gentiles that they are all under sin is the sinfulness of everyone look at verse 23 there in verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god gentile or jew high or low educated or illiterate everyone whichever color and whatever complexion for all have seen religious or irreligious idol worshippers or refined people for all have seen and come short of the glory of god let's come to number two there the present salvation through converting grace as you come to first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 3 it now tells us what has happened to the corinthian people in verse 1 he called them brethren and now he tells us in verse 3 wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of god calleth jesus accursed these people now they have, been, they have been changed and they have been transformed by the power of the spirit of god their attitude to christ has changed their utterance of christ has changed and their relationship with christ has changed and paul the apostle said that came and that was the result of the grace of god of the goodness of god and that was the result of their repenting of their sins and turning to the lord and believing of the lord jesus christ and a change happened a transformation happened and now they call jesus they don't call him a cause anymore they call jesus their lord they call jesus their savior and they are calling jesus accepting jesus receiving jesus as their lord and savior has transformed the heart the mind the will the language and the utterance and everything that they did and then it says and that no man can say that jesus is lord now these were brethren the grace of god had come into their lives and transformation had come into their lives and now they call jesus lord and then the apostles said it's by the holy ghost by the inspiration by the transformation of the holy ghost that they now could call the lord jesus look at john chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 3 john chapter 3 we're looking at verse 3 jesus answered and said unto him verily verily truly truly certainly certainly assuredly i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god these corinthians had come into the kingdom of god these sinners have been changed they have been saved they have been transformed they have come into the kingdom of god how did that happen look at verse 5 in verse 5 it tells us jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit born of water and of the spirit it is the spirit of god that convicts the sinner of sin 
it is the spirit of god that draws the sinner to pray it is the spirit of god that reminds the sinner of the sins to confess it is the spirit of god that imparts faith for salvation in the heart of the sinner it is the spirit of god that does a creative work and the gracious work and the conversion work it is the spirit of god that bears witness with the heart of that sinner that now he is a child of god and so the spirit of god has a great work and a great participation in the conversion of the sinner except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god in verse 8 we're told look at verse 8 it says the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof and canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth look at this look at this so is everyone that is born of the spirit let's come to number three there in number three we're looking at the prevailing spirituality through the creative god we're coming to first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 4 first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 4 now these there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit that verse emphasizes the part of the holy spirit look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says there are differences of administrations but the same lord verse 4 talks about the spirit verse 5 talks about the lord that's our lord jesus christ look at verse 6 verse 6 is telling us about the father and it says there are diversities of operations but it is the same god which walketh all in all you see what the apostle is telling us by the inspiration of the holy ghost is that the spirit has his part and the lord jesus has his own part and god the father has his own part the administration the operation and all the manifestation and as the trinity comes together and the trinity operates together in the life of the believer then he gives the believer a prevailing spirituality prevailing spirituality through the creative god let's look at the part of the spirit ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 3 it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace the spirit comes to the to us we're converted we're chained and then he is the one that brings the believer and integrates the believer into the body of christ and it is the spirit that helps him to continue in the bond of peace and unity with the body of christ we're looking at philippians chapter 2 in philippians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 11 philippians chapter 2 verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father now we've seen what the holy spirit does as he integrates and implants and embeds the believer into the body of christ and is united with the body of christ now the lord jesus comes in and then we're told is able to confess jesus christ as lord over his life jesus is lord 
over his actions jesus is lord over everything that he does in every situation at every time jesus is lord in prayer jesus is lord and jesus has the final say in his life anything he does everywhere he goes and whatever relationship he keeps he keeps jesus is lord of everything in his life to the glory of the father he tells us in ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 16. In Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 16, that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man, that he is now we need strength in the inner man sometimes the inner man might feel weak or feel discouraged or feel fearful or feel timid or maybe fainting and then is the power and the might of god that comes and it strengthens the believer by the spirit in the inner man look at verse 17 in verse 17 that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith like he lived in nazareth like he lived in capernaum and he lived in the fullness of power from heaven now when he comes into our hearts and lives in our hearts he doesn't shed off his power his love his might his goodness that goodness remains as is in us so because christ dwells in us we have the possibility of exercising of manifesting all the gracious attitude attributes of christ emanating from us because it dwells in us in his fullness that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he being rooted and grounded in love is saying that like a tree is planted and is rooted and grounded and the roots go deep into the ground and the winds will blow as long as the roots are there in the ground the tree will stay and abide and as we are grounded and we're rooted in love whatever the trial and whatever the wind may be blowing from the world we're rooted and we're grounded in love and the love of god keeps on manifesting through us now in verse 19 look at this in verse 19 it says and to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness all the fullness of god it's wonderful for the believer to know what the holy spirit is to us what christ is to us and what god the father is to us and the ultimate and the possibility in the life of the child of god that we might be filled with all the fullness of god i pray the lord and the spirit of god will so breathe on us that all these attributes all these possibilities will be ours in jesus name will be yours in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two comprehension of the gifts of the spirit that's what the apostle said in verse one i would not have you ignorant that means i want you to understand i want you to comprehend i want you to so understand you will be able to pray definitely for the gifts and be able to possess the gifts of the spirit when looking at uh, um, first corinthians chapter 12 uh, we're reading from verse 7 look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 
but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit whether the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit of god given to every man to you i said to you to me and to every man to profit whether he now tells us what those gifts are look at them verse 8 it says for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom number one number two to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit verse 9 number three to another faith by the same spirit number four to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit we're coming to verse 10 and then to another the walking of miracles number five to another prophecy number six to another discerning of spirits number seven to another diverse kinds of tongues that's number eight number nine to another the interpretation of tongues as we look at those nine gifts we classify them into three parts classification number one the discerning gifts of the spirit you have the word of knowledge the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits to discern to understand and to know number one discerning gifts of the spirit number two those words are the dynamic gifts a dynamic when you talk of dynamics you talk of a power that can move something in from this place out of this place and faith is dynamic faith is the thing that can remove this mountain and plant it in the sea and the gift of healing under dynamic gifts they move infirmity and sickness and disease out of the body and then they send that away and the working of miracles those are the gifts that change things if there's iron in the depths of the sea it will move that iron and bring it to the surface and then you can take it by the hand dynamic gifts of the spirit faith healing and the working of miracles now number three declarative gifts of the spirit that the gifts that declare like prophecy declaring the might of god like speaking in tongues diverse kinds of tongues revealing deep things of the secret and mysteries in another language interpretation is declaring what has been said in tongues and declaring that in a known language let's look at them one by one number one the discerning gifts of the spirit discerning gifts remember there are three of them number one the word of wisdom number two the word of knowledge number three the discerning of gifts let's look at number one in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 it says for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom what's wisdom when you have knowledge and you know how to apply that knowledge in the right way to solve a problem to counsel to enlighten people and to bring them out of darkness of confusion and you bring them into the light of clarity you have wisdom the word of wisdom you remember in second samuel chapter 12 that david had committed sin and you understand david was a king and nathan had the knowledge word of knowledge he couldn't have known it without god revealing to him and god said go and tell him 
that he is a sinner. He didn't just come to David and said, David, God said, I should tell you, you are a sinner. That's confrontational. There's no wisdom in that. There's no tact in that. And there is uh, no message that draws the person out of the pit of sin in that. But he told him a parable. And from the parable, you know the story. From the parable, David said, that man will pay for that. And then Nathan said, thou art the man. It brought conviction. It brought confession. It brought conversion. That's the wisdom we're talking about. The word of wisdom. In Matthew chapter 22. We're reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 22. We're looking at verse 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel. How they might entangle him in his talk. Entangle him. Tempt him, try him, make him say something he shouldn't have said. In verse 16, we're told, and they went out unto him with well, their disciples, with the Herodians, saying, Master. They called him Master, but he had word of wisdom. He had word of knowledge. He knew their heart. We know that thou art true. And that thou teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Verse 17, tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Yes or no? Can, shall we give tribute to Caesar? If he said yes, they'll say he wants us to be under slavery, under the captivity of the Romans. He doesn't love a country. And so they'll talk against him and publicize that to all the Israelites. If he said no, you shouldn't give any tribute, they'll say, there you are, it's against Caesar. And he'll tell all the soldiers and all the servants of Caesar, this man makes himself a king and he's supposed to Caesar instead of saying yes or no look at verse 18 in verse 18 but Jesus perceived their wickedness that's word of knowledge and said why tempt ye me ye hypocrites that's word of knowledge verse 19 show me the tribute money and they brought unto him a penny and then he said in verse 20, he says unto them, Whose is this image or superscription? And in verse 21, they say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. He didn't dodge the question. He didn't avoid the question, but he didn't fall into their trap, and he still maintains the truth. Watch of wisdom. Number two is the watch of knowledge. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the watch of wisdom. And to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Now, this is not what you learn. We learn knowledge. But it's not that kind of knowledge. We can read books, go to the library, and have knowledge. That's not this kind of knowledge. It's talking about a specific aspect of knowledge. You cannot read you cannot learn about anywhere is revealed by the Spirit of God at the very occasion that knowledge is needed. You remember Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to verse 9. What happened there? Ananias and Sapphira 
privately in their own house they came together into an agreement peter was not there that they were going to sell their land and then they were going to give part of the price unto the church but they will pretend as if that is the whole price peter was not there you cannot read about that knowledge in any book about that knowledge in any library as ananias came and he said i'm making an offering and he gave the money peter said is this all and Anana said, that's all. And then Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And then judgment came. The wife also came after. And Peter said, tell me, is that all? And the wife said, just like my husband told you, that is all. And then judgment came. That's the word of knowledge. I'm sure you remember the story of the woman at the well. That's in John chapter 17. And as Jesus was talking to her, Jesus said, go and call your husband. Remember, they had never met. And Jesus was not living in their city. There's no way Jesus would have known except there's a revelation from above. And then Jesus, when the woman said, I have no husband, Jesus said, you have told the truth. Because you have had these many husbands before and the one you are staying with now is not your husband eventually that revelation of knowledge brought the woman unto the confession that this is christ come see a man that told me everything i ever did is this not the christ the word of knowledge there's a discerning of spirits in first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 10 first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 10 to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another the discerning of spirits now when we talk of spirits there are good spirits protecting spirits and then there are bad spirits evil spirits or spirits of divination in second kings chapter 6 we're reading from verse 15 and when the servant of the man of god was risen early and gone forth behold and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and the servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do look at verse 16 and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them elijah had the sunning of spirits the servant could not see the spirits surrounding them but he told the servant that's through the discerning of spirits. Verse 17, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Like my eyes, the eyes of Elisha had been opened. Open the eyes of my servants that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, you will see. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. If Elisha did not have that discerning of spirits, he'll be panicking, he'll be fearful. But he saw that a bodyguard of chariots of fire from heaven was around him. You remember in Acts chapter 16, a damsel having a spirit of divination was following after Paul and Silas. 
and she was saying nothing that was wrong she just said these are the servants of god that show unto us the way of salvation and they she did many days but paul the apostle knew by the spirit of god it was not the good spirit the right spirit the holy spirit speaking through her and so he said i command you come out of her and it came out the same hour that's because he had the sign of spirits those three fall under the classification of the signing gifts of the spirit let's go to the second classification now dynamic gifts of the spirit that's the gift of faith dynamic that will move a mountain like a dynamite and then the gifts of healing that will come upon the sick one and the sickness of whatever description will vanish away like all sicknesses will vanish away from your life number three the walking of miracles let's look at number one number one we're looking at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 to another faith by the same spirit how important is that gift look at matthew chapter 17 verse 20 the disciples came and he asked the lord jesus why couldn't we do that and jesus said unto him because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you if ye have faith there's a gift of faith if ye have faith supernatural faith if ye have faith mountain moving faith if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and here is the power and the possibilities and the gift of faith nothing shall be impossible unto you i thought the church will say amen. amen if you have faith this gift of faith nothing shall be impossible unto you amen. sisters nothing shall be impossible unto you amen. brothers nothing shall be impossible unto you is the number one of the gifts that are dynamic number two now the gifts of healing we're coming back to first corinthians chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 9 to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit i want you to notice the wordings of that to another one person the gifts in the plural that means the gifts to heal the lame a different person the blind a different person the deaf a different person the one having arthritis a different person the person having high blood pressure and the person that is having demonic affliction the infirmity from satan all healing to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit and i pray that same gift the lord will sprinkle and will give provide abundantly to the whole church in jesus name look at the manifestation of such a gift in acts chapter 3 acts chapter 3 we're looking at verse 6 in acts chapter 3 looking at verse 6 peter said silver and gold have i known but such as i have he knew he possessed the gift of healing you will know when you possess i said you will know when you possess 
He said, such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tell me, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, and he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, And leaping up, stood, walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping, not limping, leaping, jumping, and about to run, and praising God. You will praise God. The people you pray for will praise God in Jesus' name. Number three now is the walking of miracles. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 10 to another, the walking of miracles. To another, the walking of miracles. Let me remind you when it says to another, the word of wisdom. To another, the words of knowledge. To another, the gift of faith. To another, the gifts of healing. To another, the working of miracles. That doesn't mean you only have one and you don't have the rest. We have read about Elisha. Elisha had the words of knowledge. And wherever the king was, that he was trying to wage war against the king of Israel. He was sent to the king of Israel in such and such a place, as the king of Assyria. And in the word of wisdom, he will tell him, don't go this place. He will counsel him in the power of the Spirit of God. And the gift of faith, yeah, the gift of faith. He raised the dead and then uh, the gift of healing. Even when he died and a dead body touched his body, that dead body rose up. And the gift of walking of miracles is the one that made that, um, that iron to swim. And prophecy, he had that to you according to my word tomorrow. We will be sold at this price. And then the servant upon whom the king leaned, if God will open the windows of heaven, might that be the word came out of him? You'll see it with your eyes and you will not taste of it. The point is, when you go to the Lord, what your ministry requires, what your duty requires, all the gifts as you wait upon the Lord, He will give unto you in Jesus' name. I thought you say a good as breaking. Amen. Look at number three here, the walking of miracles to another, the walking of miracles. Look at Acts chapter 19. Verse 11, Acts chapter 19, we're looking at verse 11. And God wrought special miracles, not ordinary miracles, but extraordinary miracles, great miracles, special miracles by the hands of Paul. Look at verse 12, in verse 12, so that from his body were brought unto the sick and kashifs or aprons and the diseases depart from them and evil spirit went out of them as the Lord did in days gone by he will do today it wasn't only Peter that had the gifts Paul had the gifts the rest of the apostles had the gifts Barnabas, Silas, Timothy, others had their own gifts. You will have your own gifts. I will have my own gift. We'll come to number three now. Number three, the declarative gifts of the Spirit. These are the gifts that declare, number one, prophecy. 
Number two, diverse kinds of tongues. Number three, interpretation of tongues. Number one, prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy. Look at chapter 14, reading from verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. It tells us, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. When Jehoshaphat said to Isaiah, and said, look at all these armies that are against us, and we do not know what we are going to do. The gift of prophecy manifested, you will not shoot an arrow, you will not do anything, but that king will go back to his own country, the Lord will deliver you for the sake of his name, and for David's sake, and it happened like that and when god gives you the word of prophecy as it is revealed it will be fulfilled in jesus name Amen. number two here diverse kinds of tongues we're looking at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 it says to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits, we've we'll talked about that, to another diverse kinds of tongues, different kinds of tongues, different kinds of languages, supernaturally given. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 14, and we're reading here from verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're reading from verse 5. It says, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that, she, that ye may prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except ye interpret that the church may receive a define already it comes to interpretation as well and so we have those gifts that declare and whatever we need of the promise of god of the provision of god the lord will provide and grant unto you as you believe him in jesus name God bless you. I say God will give you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the concentration on gifts without sanctification. Let's understand there is consecration by the godly for the spiritual gifts. And as you are godly, and you give yourself unto God, and you ask the Lord as a godly person. Everything you are asking to use for the glory of God, the Lord will grant you in Jesus' name. But there is the warning. We shouldn't run after gifts, and then we leave holiness and sanctification behind. Why? Look at Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, if God gives you the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the sign of gifts, and faith, and healing, and the working of miracles, and prophecy, and tongues, and interpretation, make sure you're still at the center of doing the will of the Father, which is in heaven. 
but if you concentrate on the gifts and then you run away from sanctification look at verse 22 in verse 22 many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works these people telling the lord the arch the discerning gifts and they cast out devils and they had the dynamic gifts and they did many wonderful works and they even had the discerning gifts and they prophesied the declarative gifts but look at verse 23 it says and then when i profess unto them i never knew you if they were saved he will not say i never knew you if their names were written in the book of life he will not say i never knew you if they were walking in righteousness by the grace of god in their lives as new creatures he will not say i never knew you if they had the holiness without which no man shall say the lord he will not have said i never knew you but he said i never knew you where are you coming from oh we we'll walk miracles and we we'll prophesied and we we'll cast out devils in your name and then you said i'll profess to them i never knew you depart from me ye that walk iniquity that's what we're told in first corinthians chapter 13. first corinthians chapter 13 reading from verse 1 though i speak or the tongues of men and of angels diverse kinds of tongues and have not charity have not love the love of god and the love of my neighbor it says and become as a lifeless sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal look at verse 2 it says do i have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and do i have all faith so that i could remove mountains and have not charity love the love of god loving god with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and making every action of your life as an act of love if you don't have that it says i am nothing in verse 3 it says and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be born and have not charity the love of god and the love of the brethren i command you to love one another as i have loved you if that love is not there it's only what we have is casting out devils and removing mountains and healing the sick it says it profited me nothing and you say is that possible very much look at them one by one number one it's possible to have wisdom without watchfulness i'm sure you remember solomon he had wisdom and god gave him wisdom more than all the people living on earth at his own time but he was not watchful wisdom without watchfulness and the lord jesus said watch and pray that you enter not into temptation i pray god will keep us from the temptation of the flesh and the temptation from the devil in jesus name somebody there is shouting amen, amen. number two knowledge without knowing self knowledge without knowing self the people that have the gift of knowledge and they can say there's somebody there something is happening this and that raise up your hand and they raise up their hands and he prays for them but they do not have knowledge of themselves 
the knowledge about their own life they don't have self-examination whether they be in the faith or they are not in the faith the place they should go the place they should stay back the things they should say and the things they should not say they don't have knowledge about themselves they have knowledge about problems about sickness about this and about that and they fall into pitfalls they could have avoided if they had knowledge of themselves number three discernment without discipline discernment without discipline i'm sure you remember balaam Balaam, Balak said unto him, There are people that have covered the land. Come and cause them for me that they will not be able to enter into my land. And then God uh, he said, You can uh, wait this night. And he went to pray. And God said, Balaam, who are those people? And he said, they are the people that came from Balak. They are calling me to come and cause some people called Israelites. And God said, don't go with them. You should not cause them. They are blessed. And he told those people, I cannot go. God says, I should not go. Balak sent other people again. And then he didn't have discipline. He had discernment. He knew that these people must not be cursed, but they are blessed. But he didn't have discipline. He went to God again. And he said, God, they have come again. And God said, you want to go. There's covetousness and greed in your heart. And you don't have control over your spirit and over that temptation. Okay, you can go. And as he went, an angel met him by the way with a drawn sword. To cut a long story short, he died under the anger of God in disobedience to God and now is on the other side in eternity is in hell he had discernment he didn't have discipline look at Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 Proverbs chapter 25 let's look at verse 28 he that has no rule over his own spirit he that has no control over his own spirit he that doesn't have uh, discipline over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. That is, I go, I go, I go, and he doesn't know when to stop. He doesn't know when to slow down. He doesn't know when to wait. He doesn't know when to say, no, I will not do that at this time. And as Paul went to Troas and Bithynia, the Spirit of the Lord said, Don't go. And he stayed back and he waited until he saw a man of Macedonia come over to Macedonia and help us. That man had discipline the people that have a go-getting spirit go get it go get it go get it and they do not have discipline even with their discernment they do not have the gift of disciplining themselves god will help you god will help me number four we're looking at the people that have faith without fruit faith without fruit they have the gift of faith they can move that mountain they can break that door they can move that door but the fruit that the lord is expecting the fruit of the spirit is love and peace and joy and long suffering and patience perseverance and fidelity faithfulness and meekness they do not have a self-control temperance they have faith dynamic faith and they can say that thing get out of that place i command you they know how to command but they do not have 
the fruit of the spirit look at john chapter 15 verse 2 in john chapter 15 verse 2 every branch in me that bears not fruit every branch in me they were in christ and they have the power to manifest this and manifest that but they bear no fruit the father will take away look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us every branch verse 6 now john chapter 15 verse 6 if a man abides not in me is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt i pray you'll not be like that in jesus name number five there are people that have healing without holiness healing and they tell us i specialize in healing and any sickness any infirmity any plague any problem once i mention the name of jesus and i say go it must go we we'll say that's good that's good christ healed the sick how the father god anointed him with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the of the devil he had the gift of healing we too we can have the gift of healing but healing the sick does not take the minister or the member to heaven healing the sick is good it's profitable it does not take the person enjoying the healing or exercising the healing gift it doesn't take you to heaven those who have healing without holiness will be disappointed on the final day look at this matthew chapter 24 verse 24 for there shall arise false christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they will deceive the very elect but look at hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 14 follow peace with all men have you seen people they have healing gifts and they can manifest healing but they don't have peace with their wives they can fast seven days 14 days 21 days even 40 days because they want this power when i get on the field this will happen but they don't have peace with their neighbors have you found a people that if it comes to commanding evil speak casting them out these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover they do that the only danger for them is that they have healing gifts without the grace of holiness follow peace with all men and uh, holiness without which no man shall see the lord and then there are people that have miracles without mastery miracle without mastery what that means is they don't have mastery over their tongue they don't have mastery over their temper they don't have mastery over their personality and as uh, anything occurs to them, they just blast it out. And they blow out it out. They have miracle power. They do not have mastery. But we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do eat to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, an incorruptible, verse 26, Six, it says, I therefore so run, not as beating the air, so fight I, not as one that beated the air. And then in verse 27, but I keep my body under. He has mastery. 
He has miracle power. He had manifestation of miracle, but yet he had mastery. The danger of damnation and doom is the one that runs after and pursues miracles without mastery. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have prayed to others, I myself, if I didn't have mastery, I myself get angry at any time, flow off, fly off, with bad temper at any time, take wine and take drugs, and he doesn't have control, he cannot reject that hard drug, and then he still manages to have a miracle ministry. But there's no mastery that I myself should be a cast away. I pray you'll not be a cast away in Jesus' name. Uh, number seven, let's look at number seven, prophecy without profit. Prophecy without profit. It can prophesy in any prayer meeting prophecy and every else fellowship prophecy and every time he goes anywhere, I have a word for you, I have a word for you. But he is not studying the scriptures that was profitable for doctrine and profitable for instruction and profitable for correction. There is no profit of correction in his life, only prophecy, prophecy. I pray the Lord will grant us a balanced ministry and a balanced life in Jesus' name. Number eight, diverse tongues without disciplined tongues diverse tongues without disciplined tongues in first uh, corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 do i speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity the tongue is not the tongue of love. It doesn't have the language of love. It doesn't communicate love. It doesn't communicate compassion. It doesn't communicate mercy. It cannot talk and show love to people and comfort people. Talk about speaking in tongues and then it lashes out. I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and yet I don't have charity. I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. We're told in James chapter 3 verse 5. James chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. He's talking about the one that does not have the disciplined tongue, even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. In verse 6, it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature. Listen to this. And it is set on fire of hell. Other people have interpretation without integrity. Anytime somebody speaks in tongue in their assembly, in their church, they are the people to just get up. They are what they are saying is, thus says the Lord, and then he'll give an interpretation. But the man, the woman does not have integrity at home. Integrity in the community. Integrity in the place of work. It just uh, interpreting, interpreting, but integrity of life is not there. In Proverbs chapter 11, looking at verse 3, integrity is very important. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Integrity of the upright of the child of God shall lead them and guide them and they'll comport themselves in the proper way a man to a woman, a woman to a man having integrity. They'll conduct themselves in such a way you will know that they are upright in the private, in the public, in the place of work and in the community. 
the integrity of the upright will guide them but the perverseness of transgressors maybe all they can do is just interpret this interpret that even some people try to interpret the bible and they interpret the prophecies of uh, you know the word of god in the bible and they can interpret very well but interpretation without integrity you know job job kept his integrity he didn't understand he couldn't interpret all the things that were happening to him he said but all the same i know that my redeemer liveth, and on the final day he will appear and then i will see him face to face by myself the man did not have interpretation of all the things happening to him but he kept his integrity i pray that god will help us that everything we ought to have in the balanced way we will have in jesus name as you have wisdom you have watchfulness as you have knowledge you have the knowledge of yourself and as you have faith you have the fruit as you have healing you have holiness and as you have miracles you have maturity and mastery and as you have prophecy you have what profits you in life and in the family and in mystery in jesus name and as you have different kinds of tongues you have discipline tongues in jesus name and as you have discerning of spirit you'll also have the discipline of uh, of your spirit in jesus name as you have interpretation the gift of interpretation integrity will abide in your life all that god has provided of spiritual gifts and spiritual grace everything combined together in a balanced way the lord will pour upon your life in jesus name where is the brother the sister i'm talking about why don't you rise up and say lord i receive lord i receive and pray and let the goodness of god the grace of god and the gifts of god be poured upon your life even tonight the lord will do it for you in jesus name open your mouth and pray